lost in your mind For you and for I I'm trying to decide I'm looking in your eyes, yeah, yeah Welcome back, you guys are listening to Inside the RV We are 44 episodes in, damn that's crazy, I am stoked Shout out to all the insiders who are listening, we really appreciate you guys If you're new, thanks for coming along This is a podcast about entrepreneurship, work ethic, self-development And becoming the best version of yourself You're joined by your two lovely hosts, I'm one of them, my name is Jacob Moore I'm the other one, Ryan Ramirez Together, we are an artist and artist manager duo looking to be successful in the music industry, build our careers, and obtain the level of success that we know we have the potential to achieve. And we're telling you about the things that we learn in real time uh, through this podcast. Mm. And I just think that it's so important to understand that you're going to have moments of fear and moments of doubt, and moments where you feel like shit. And I've been having a lot of ups and downs right now because my cousin Brett, I know we said last podcast we were going to get him on this week, but I think he's going to be on next week because he's he's actually graduating college this weekend. So yeah, yeah. he's going back up to San Luis Obispo right now. But um, so I was thinking of the topic for this this podcast this week, and me and Brett have started a candle business. So for anyone that's keeping up on my social media, I didn't tell anyone this, but my last job that I was doing as self-employed work, uh, I was getting paid really good. I had awesome clients, but I did not like the work. So I saved up a few grand enough to live off for a couple months, and then I quit. Haven't done it for about a month or two, and I was like, okay, what's the next venture to make money? Uh, Like right now, obviously me and Ryan, like we're working out making money with his music career in my music well, that's career. That's not happening right now. So. Yeah, but I need money like now, yeah. right? So I was like, okay, what's like a cool little business we could start? So me and Brett have been selling candles. And uh, it was it, it has been really fun to jump back in to entrepreneurship from the ground up, you know, building the Etsy shop and uh, sourcing supplies and, and figuring out who our market is and all that. And it's so fun. Like that's what I mm-hmm. got my degree in. I got my degree in entrepreneurship. I love what we're doing and it's so fun. But you know what I faced again mm-hmm. was the fucking crazy fear and, oh, fuck, man, is this even worth it? Like mm-hmm. you know, what if I just blow through that couple grand I have saved up? Mm-hmm. And and what if me and Brett don't even make the amount of money or serve the the, the audience? as mm-hmm. good as we want to because we want to make a killer product yeah, right yeah. like we like yes we're going to make a lot of money from selling candles but it's awesome from the people who have already bought from us on etsy and stuff like i've had people message me and stuff and be like dude this is so killer you guys are awesome I, that feels good yeah you know but so i was able to experience over the last couple weeks the awesomeness and the excitement of entrepreneurship from the ground up again mm-hmm. and also the bullshit and the headaches and the heartache and I was listening to this podcast. It was Ed Milet and Tim Grover, mm-hmm. the two beasts that we yeah, always yeah, yeah. talk about on this podcast. Because yeah. Tim Grover, as you guys probably heard, you know, has dropped a new book. It's called Winning. Ryan actually gave me a copy, bro. Thank you. Oh, this guy is so passionate about Tim Grover and just yeah. being a winner and being a leader that Ryan bought me the book Winning by Tim Grover. I've already cracked it open. It's awesome. Yeah. I would say go get it. Um, but they said something really profound on that podcast. And Tim Grover said that he always had fears, yeah. never had doubts. Yeah. He always feared, what if I lose, what a blah, 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 blah. He always had these fears in his mind, but he never doubted that he could do it. Yeah. And I was feeling like shit, as we all do, the ups and downs, whatever. And I really was questioning, you know, why I was feeling so bad and what it was. And I was doubting myself. Mm-hmm. I was I was doubting whether the skills and experience I had was enough to launch this candle company, whether I could juggle that, you know, and still be successful with you. And then I started thinking, oh my God, and I still have to eat three meals a day and drink eight cups of water. And, you yeah. know, there all these things coming into my mind. And then I heard that in the podcast and it really sparked an awesome kind of brainstorm. And I started thinking and Fear is a, the necessary evil that is part of entrepreneurship that I think you have to use as fuel. Yeah. And when they said that it's okay to have fears but never doubt yourself, I really felt that yeah. because I think we can all share in the experience of feeling fears. Mm-hmm. But I think that the second you start to doubt yourself is when you're already becoming okay with taking an L. That's when you get you paralyzed. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because I think fear is like, fear is a little more like, kind of gets your adrenaline going you start feeling shit and it kind of like pushes you to make a move Mm -hmm. 
but doubt is where you like you get you sink in like the pain and you sink and just like don't want to do anything and like you get insecure and it just feels like shit and you don't mm-hmm. want to move like mm-hmm. i think that's 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 kind of what he said too yeah which was interesting yeah. so um yeah i think a lot of times like when it's like when it's it's fear a lot of times it's doubt when when you're paralyzed and it's not really fear I mean, I think I, I'm sure there's an element of both, but I think mm-hmm. it's mostly doubt in that sense. I think fear is more external. Yeah. Fear is kind of like, oh, I wonder if these people are going to like this product. Mm. Oh, man, I'm fearful that I'm going to lose my money. And doubt comes from kind of this way deeper inner insecurity like no confidence no confidence about it you don't think that you have whatever the internal characteristics are yeah to achieve what you've set out to achieve Mm -hmm. and that can be very very debilitating for some people for everybody yeah we've all i think we've all felt it yeah and 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 that's you know that's where the self-confidence some people call it cockiness we talked about it in the last fucking episode but that's where the true self-confidence comes into play so number one i think that it's important to maintain a level of confidence that never allows you to doubt yourself because what happened was i let me explain what happened was i listened to that podcast episode and i was like why am i doubting myself I have a degree. I have so much experience on my resume. I have real deal entrepreneurship experience. I have the capital saved up to invest in the business. I've already learned so much. And there's more than enough time in the day to get the things done that Ryan needs done and my candle business. And I can juggle life. Like I could do all these things. I started kind of going over the list of of what I'm capable of accomplishing, Mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of eliminated any doubts now are there still some fears of course it's like we totally yeah. screwed up i told you ryan we screwed up some of the mm-hmm. the uh like operations today and stuff like that but that was something that like really hit me was you can't doubt yourself and if you do that's when you have to rely on your confidence yeah i think i think it's somewhat of a blessing though to go through like that doubtful insecure phase whatever that is because after that when you choose if and when you choose to get out of it mm-hmm. now you fight like hell like forever after that to never feel that again because it's it's, yeah. it's the worst feeling like in the world it is like it sucks so like now your winning is fueled by getting that taste out of your mouth mm-hmm. and it sounds like on the outside that sounds miserable like it sounds like oh that sounds like a shitty fucking you know path because then yeah. now you're just trying to fight this misery uh-huh. this whole time by working hard but it's like yeah but you get like this internal fulfillment when you do work hard and you overcome it. And it just like, there's like an internal happiness that's like unexplainable when you start winning Mm -hmm. and like get away from it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not, it it sounds miserable service level, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So I think, and I think that's the trick. Like that's the, the tricky part about it that I think people miss because they see that and they're like, Oh, like in order to win, like I got to keep winning and keep it up. And you know what I'm saying? Like it's never, it's not just like, like it sounds like it's going to be hard for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. But and I think people get psyched out by that, but once you actually just take action and do it, you see, "Oh, like like I I feel good doing this because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm overcoming and I'm I'm becoming better mm-hmm. and I can see myself grow and evolve and it's just like a it's an internal like feeling that's like unexplainable mm-hmm. when you start getting it, you know?" So, <clears throat> that's a big thing for me is like I was driving I was driving to your pad right before this. And I came straight from Brett's house where we were doing all the stuff in the shop. And um, I I had to embrace the discomfort. And that's another big thing too is like I think a lot of times when you doubt yourself, you're just not comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. And you hear that a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and you got to try new things. But it's yeah. true. Yeah. It's absolutely true. And um I was driving to your pad right now and I just like, I'm sweaty. I've been pouring candles all day. I smell like fragrance. I don't have a lot of money in my bank account. I am tired to do the podcast, whatever. And it was like all of these external things kind of started like leading to this doubt, whatever, whatever. But like, okay, so the the things that I just mentioned, like feeling tired, whatever, the money in the bank, blah, 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 whatever. I, I had to stop and evaluate that and look at it as opportunities to become better to make more money Mm -hmm. to become more to adapt to working more hours in the day 
at, to getting a better night of sleep. Like I, I looked at it as opportunities to like, okay, I'm experiencing this discomfort mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. What I'm ex I'm experiencing all these th th this discomfort. So what can I do to adapt to that? Mm -hmm. So on the way here, I was like, okay, if you're tired right now, you probably should have gotten a better night of sleep last night, Jacob. Mm -hmm. And if you spilled pouring all your candles today, whatever, whatever, this and that, and all the and you have no money and whatever. So I started just being more like solutions oriented yeah, yeah, yeah. and thinking that way. Um, and that eliminated a lot of my doubt. Now, you know, cause like when I was listening to that episode, it's, it's like, he says, don't ever doubt yourself. And, and I think that that is a thing that you have to train yourself to do. Yeah. I really do. Like I'm even, you know, even after listening to that episode, I still had to day over day train myself to be like, Jacob, stop doubting yourself. It's okay to feel fear, mm. but stop telling yourself that because when you doubt yourself, you basically say that you don't have the skills, the resources, whatever it is necessary to accomplish it. I think, right? yeah, I think the greats or just anybody successful, like I think they, they all have that same voice, um, maybe to a lesser degree because they've like, you know, they've earned like their spots or whatever, but I think everyone has that voice, but the most successful people are the ones that are able to like shut it off or they, they yeah. know, they know the keys for themselves to turn it off. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so interested in like the Tim Grover shit when he says like, you got to channel your dark side and like, it sounds, it sounds like weird or whatever, mm -hmm. but everyone has like that, that thing about them that just like, is that trigger of like, that's just going to push you to do something or whatever. Like, um, so I think it's just finding that with it within yourself, um, and like not be afraid of it. You know what I'm saying? Like that you can just keep that with yourself. Like you don't have to like tell everyone like what those things are or whatever, but just like use that as your fuel. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's just like the raw, the raw reality of it. Like, I feel like no one wants to talk about like the dark shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what's your true motive basically? You're not, not necessarily motive, but maybe like fuel. Yeah. Like your fuel, like, like, um, like I'll give you an example. Like uh -huh. for me, um, it's like it's like the thing I talked about you before. Like, you know, I grew up as a small kid, whatever. Puber uh, puberty was late. I wanted to be, be the alpha, whatever. So like, it's like I use things like okay, I tell myself like literally stop being a pussy, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like that's my trigger because mm -hmm. I feel like I don't want to be a pussy. Like mm -hmm. I I don't know. That just works for me. Like, mm -hmm. but everyone has like that dark thing about them. Like the memories that they wanted to they want to like never go back to or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they think about mm -hmm. that and that's like, cause it was dark for them. And so they use that and think about, they'd be like, I'm never going back again. And then mm -hmm. that pushes them to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's just like finding those things, uh, to get over the doubts. But I think everyone has that voice in their head, like of yeah. that doubt, you know, to some degree. Yeah. That was the first thing when I heard that discussion, I was like, fuck dude, it's really hard. Like to completely train yourself to eliminate all doubts. But I think what can help that is just experience mm -hmm. and continually achieving goals. You know, I think there's just very few ingredients for, for the recipe to success. Like yeah. that, that I'm learning. It's like be consistent, work hard, learn, um, have a great fuel. Like there, you know what I mean? Like that, like yeah. there's a couple things and we've talked about those in the podcast and it's like, it's like different combinations, all of the same sort of like fundamentals. I, I think it all revolves you know? around taking action. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, yeah, man. But I mean, to anyone out there who's listening, who's like, oh, I'm seriously doubting myself, whatever, this and that, you can look at it in one of two ways, right? You can either look at that doubt and let it eat you alive, or you can take that and smash that shit into the fucking dirt. And that's, and, and I think that training yourself to do that is, is kind of the first step to eliminating all doubt, right? So like mm -hmm. on the way here, I was like, okay, I'm feeling doubtful of my skills. I'm feeling doubtful of, you know, my, in, my intelligence. Can I accomplish it? I'm having these internal struggles, these doubts based on internal characteristics mm -hmm. and things. And so I think the first step to, combat, to combating doubt at all is to first, when you feel doubt, remind yourself of your capabilities and mm -hmm. how in a real logical way you can achieve the goal you set out to do. That's why like what yeah. I said a couple minutes ago, like I was driving in the car. I was like, okay, Jacob, like you're having these doubts because you don't have a lot of money. You don't have this, like whatever, whatever. So I started thinking of real world solutions and ways that I could combat mm. those, those doubts and stuff. And so once you're able to combat it, I think I, I'm saying this based on like my, my 
newfound knowledge of how I'm tackling doubt, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing it as you can start off by always reminding yourself what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you're, you're always going to be so focused on your what you're capable of with mm -hmm. your skill set, your characteristics, your personality, mm -hmm. your experience, yeah. that you eventually, when you when you have any doubts, you can just fucking push them to the side because you've yeah. already been consistently reminding yourself of what you can accomplish. I agree. So that's, does that make sense? Yeah, I agree. Okay. And, and I think okay. like overall, like welcome that pain because that that pain is going to be what makes you into like the monster or yeah. make you into the badass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause uh, like for you and me, for example, like growing up, we really didn't have any like hardships like that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we, I mean, we were pretty lucky to have like great families, you know we're what I'm very, saying? We're very fortunate. Guys. We were very fortunate, very fortunate growing fortunate up. Guys. Very fortunate. Yeah. And so obviously everyone has different stories, but I never really became, I personally never became that badass that I see myself as now until I went through the shit and I went through hell. Yeah. You know, like yeah. those those times that really fucking destroyed me and like, mm -hmm. you know, like it, it just molded me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I think I think those scars are like actually like the best way to become who you want to be. You know what I mean? So I think welcome that um, mm -hmm. it sucks and it, it's, you know, but I'm not, I'm not saying like the whole journey is like this, but like I think there's moments where that's going to happen or phases and it's mm -hmm. like, but that's necessary for you to yeah. evolve, you know? What do you have to say to a music artist or an entrepreneur or someone who is doubting themselves before they're even getting started? Um, the only way to break that is by taking action. Yeah. Because um, I think even when it says in the book, like um, when you start getting wins, you start feeling more and more confident. And that's why I stand by what we always talk about. Like the, the way to get true confidence is by taking action consistently mm -hmm. and doing shit. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only real way that you can develop that real confidence. Um, you can do that fake until you make it shit, but I don't think that's like I don't think that's a, a proper method of doing it. I think I don't know. I think that's a lot more draining than really like earning it. You know? I, th I think the trend that I'm noticing in a lot of the discussions that we have is that everything is internal. Yeah, it's internally how you react to to you know, things you experience externally. Yeah. It's internally you feel those doubts. Mm -hmm. It's internally what characteristics are, do I have or what traits do I have mm -hmm. or the confidence that I have that allows me to accomplish what I want to accomplish, you know? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is like how Ryan just said, you know, take action, um, just do it, see what types of results that you can bring for yourself. Mm -hmm. You just got to remember that like this, this is on you. Mm -hmm. And I always have to remind myself of that. I'm like, dude, like I have this to-do list in my notes on my iPhone. Ryan isn't going to do it for me. The hot ass girl that I crushed on all of high school isn't going to do it for me. Mm -hmm. My boss isn't going to do it for me at whatever job. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like the, the, the jocks that I used to like walk by them at, at school and be like, fuck, oh man, like I wish I was as cool as those guys. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. no one else is going to do it for you. That, that self-confidence, the accomplishments, the drive, the willingness to achieve and succeed is, is internal. It all comes from you. And that's like the biggest fucking thing I'm learning on this entrepreneurship journey. It's like, dude, like <laughs> I never thought my biggest fucking enemy and biggest like obstacle I would have to overcome was myself, yeah. bro. Yeah. Oh my fucking God. Yeah. I remember growing up and like hearing adults and shit and they're like, oh, just wait till you're an adult. It gets harder. I'm like, bitch, what are you talking about? It gets harder. Uh, yeah, and yeah. now you have like these mental and these internal battles with yourself and yeah. like, am I good enough and all that? It's like, but, but so this is an internal battle. This is a solo mission. This is, this is a one man army. You know what I mean? And, and, and something, uh, Tim says in the book too, he's like, um, there's a battlefield going on in your, in your mind every day. And everybody feels it. Like everyone has it. Mm -hmm. Um, to to whatever they're going through, or like mm -hmm. their, whatever situation they're in. Um, yeah. and I think the reason why I love like that book so much, it just the podcast we listen to and all that shit. Mm -hmm. Like it's less about, it's less about. I mean, it is about the gems, obviously, and mm -hmm. what they say. But I think the deeper part of it of why I'm so addicted to it is because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not alone. Because Whoa. I think like this journey, you can feel very lonely because like no one's really trying. I mean. I want to say it's rare, but, like, I think there's way less people, like, trying to better themselves in this way, mm -hmm. like, uh, consistently and stuff. Like, everyone's just kind of, like, chilling and, you know, just living life or whatever whatever it is. Um, but I think there's a, a select few people like us who just are really trying to, like, make it and better ourselves and stuff. So the, the podcast really just serve as, like, 
okay, like I feel like I I feel like I know Andy Frisella. Like I feel like oh wow, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm in the room with him and he's talking to me right now and I'm not crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, cause it's easy to feel crazy. Like, yeah. like with what the shit we do because you got to think a different way, you know. Yeah. And so I feel like comfort in the way that they're there too. Yeah. You know. But guess what? Hmm. Tim Grover ain't gonna do sh- shit no, for ex- you. Exactly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the one thing I'm realizing yeah. too is like, like when Kobe is working with Tim Grover or whatever, like, f- you know, it's still on Kobe. Yeah. You, the players, you know got, the players got to want it more than the coach or else nothing's going to happen. Yeah. The coach can't want it more than the player. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, man. Yeah. It's so funny. It's like, there's definitely a, and I think a growing, thanks to social media, a growing, you know, um, group of people who want to develop themselves, want to become better, want to make millions of dollars, want to support their family, want to be successful as fuck. And I think there's a growing group of that. And it's so funny because it's a community, but it's it's all based around like the individual. Mm. It's all based around what this this individual, we're putting it all on you. What can you accomplish? So yeah. I think it's funny that you find comfort in that, but still it's like, it's all individualistic. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know? for sure. But, it, but I just, just think that's funny. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just knowing I'm not the only one like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. For sure, man. Yeah, but I think that doubting yourself is natural. The first way to combating it is to remind yourself of what you're able to accomplish. If you feel like you haven't accomplished much, I would take action and continue to take action and see what types of results you can bring and start from there. And that's going to grow your confidence. And then eventually, when doubt hits you, because you're taking so much action, because you're seeing your accomplishments, accomplishments, excuse me, because you're developing so much day by day, when doubt hits you again, you're going to go, what the fuck is this? Psh, you're going to throw it in the trash and you're going to keep on going. Yeah. You're not going to have any doubts. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, and so that's something that I'm currently working on um, mm-hmm. and I'm getting better at, you know, like I said, like if this was a year ago, I would have driven home and been like, fuck man, I don't, I don't think I could do this, whatever, whatever. But I drove home from Brett's today and I was like, no, I'm just hitting an obstacle. I'm going to be successful as fuck. Yeah. You know, I'm going to set out to, I Part am, story. I am going to make the number of dollars I wrote down for myself for the candle business. I will. I, it, I will. One thing I think about all the time too, is like, um, I heard someone say this before when someone creates a bio or a documentary about you, um, or writes a book about you, or you write your own book, mm-hmm. like a w- autobiography or whatever. The book's not going to be interesting unless there's a bunch of fucking pitfalls. Mm. You're not going to inspire no one if it's yeah. just like a smooth sail mm-hmm. and shit just happened for you and it was easy. Like, yeah. how the fuck is that going to inspire anybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's always like it's always the the shit and like the raw part of it that is what inspires that next kid or like the next generation of people. And so it's like it's like. All this shit's like necessary, mm-hmm. you know. The only choice that you just have to make is just keep going, which I've realized like, yeah. you know, you're going to always adapt to situations and get better and mentally grow and stuff. So, um it's like it won't be like that forever. I always think about that too. Like there's it's, it's impossible for it to feel like that forever. Yeah. You're going to you're going to find a way out of things, you know. Yeah. My man, put the icing on the cake right there. Let's go. That's fire. Hey everyone, um to our huge listener base, Ryan's performing at the OC Fair. Yeah, it's a uh, kind of just a low key little thing. I think it's as I was telling Ryan, it's going to be a great thing for me, Ryan, and Sticks to kind of work together internally and yeah. kind of take this like new, you know, more uh, recently branded Ryan that we've been working on, and to be able to have fun and get creative at this show. So I know we don't have a huge listenership on the podcast. That's why I'm saying it because it's just yeah. like, hey, if you're listening, if you're going to be at the OC Fair, mm-hmm. it's uh, Thursday, August twelfth. Yeah, at 4 p.m. at the Meadow stage, but I thought that was interesting. Ryan's got a lot of songs in the vault. We listened. What was the one you showed me today? Potential. 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 That's yeah. a really good track. Really good track. And um, yeah, with Ryan's music career and our music careers, I'm I'm happy. We're kind of just like on a s- steady upswing. Yeah. And things are good, you know. Leveling Hope, it up. Leveling it up, dude. But everyone, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll catch you next week. We got two really badass des- uh, guests coming on. Pretty oh, yeah. stoked. All right, guys. It's peace out. For you and for Ryan. Ryan, Ryan. I'm trying to decide from the look in your eyes, yeah, yeah I mean besides, but your feelings inside you I'm pushing up my mind